In this tutorial, I will teach you how to model steel lug using Abacus. Steel lugs can be used in variety of applications and most of the time it is welded on one side and on other side it has bolt and load is applied on the bolt. This is a problem I want to solve today. The height is 0 0.05 meter, the length is 0.125 and there is a hole inside and a pressure of 50 MPA is applied only at half portion of this one. I will be using SI units, which means length will be in meters, force, newtons, and all these units. I will model this problem using these nine steps, starting from part, property, assembly, step, interaction, load, mesh, job, and visualization module. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. First step is part where we will create geometry. Double click on part, rename it as lug, 3D deformable extrusion, and approximate side is 0.25. Once it's done, then I will start with rectangle. Click on rectangle, one corner and other corner, cancel the procedure. And then I would like to remove this line. Click on delete. Click on this line and it's done. Then I want to assign equal length constraint to these two lines. Click on constraint, equal length constraint. Press shift key, click here, click here. Equal length constraint has been defined. And then I will give dimension to this side, which is 0 0.05. And then I will give dimension to horizontal line as well, which is 0 0.1. Once this is done, then I will go to arc and three points. Click here and click here. And I will define any point. And then I will assign tangent constraint to these two points. Click on constraints, tangent, click on this line and this line, click on this line and this line. It will assign tangent constraint to arc and the line. Then I will define circle and perimeter. So center of circle should be roughly in between these two lines. It doesn't really have to be exact center. So this is not exact center, but I've drawn this, then cancel the procedure. And then I will uh, define a concentric constraint to these two shapes, circle and arc. Click on concentric, concentric. Click on the first one and click on the second one. Now you can see both of these shapes are concentric and the center exactly lies on this line. And I want to ensure that the vertical distance between these two points is zero. And that will ensure that the dimension of the cycle is horizontal click on dimension click on this line click on this line the vertical distance has to be zero now vertical distance is zero then i will dimension it again this point this point the horizontal distance has to be 0 0.015 in this way this hole has been created click done for the shape and the depth of extrusion is 0 0.02. Now the shape has been created. Second step is property module where we will define materials and assign cross sections. Next, I will define materials. Go to property and double click on materials. I will say steel. Go to mechanical elastic. Young's modulus is 200E9. Poison's ratio is 0 0.3. Click done, material has been defined. Then I will define a section. So I will say lug section, solid homogeneous, continue, steel, lug section has been defined. Then I will go to parts and then section assignment. We'll double click on that. I will click the entire shape and I will assign this section to the part. In this way, material has been defined, section has been defined and section has been assigned as well. Third step is assembly module where we will assemble all parts. Next is assembly. I will go to assembly module, click on assembly, click on instances, click on this lug part and click OK. 
the assembly has been defined. Fourth step is step module where we define all analysis steps and parameters. And then I will define step. Go to a step and here I will define a step. I will say lug load static channel click continue. Here I will write apply uniform pressure and I will keep everything as default except these increments. I want very small increment 0.1 and maximum size I'll keep it as 0.1 as well. And that way it will give me some increments. Click OK. A step has been defined. And then I will go to field output requests. Here I, I would like stresses. I don't want strains. Displacements, yes. Forces, I would like reactions. And I would like the nodal forces as well. So click on nodal forces due to element stresses. And I don't want any contact. Click OK. I will keep history output as default. Fifth is interaction module where we define contact interactions and constraints. After completing this step, I will go to interaction. There is no interaction here, so I will leave this step. Sixth is load module where we define boundary conditions and loading. And then I will go to load. In load, I will define not only loading but the boundary conditions as well. So go to step lug load. First, I will Defined fix left end mechanical symmetry anti symmetry in caster. Click continue. It is asking me for the shape. I'm choosing this surface. Click OK. And I will say in caster, in caster means fixed. A fixed boundary condition has been applied to the end of lug. And then I will apply load. But before I apply load, this has to be partitioned, otherwise, the load can't be applied properly. So go to part and partition and three points. I will choose these three points. One is this, other is this one, and third is this one. And that way it will create a partition. Then I want to use this opportunity to partition vertically as well. That will help me create proper meshes. So if you go to mesh, you can see the color is not green. Green color indicates that it can be partitioned using a structured mesh. A structured mesh means the size of the elements are going to be roughly cuboid. First of all, I'll create a datum point. So I'll go to tools and datum point. Offset from a point. I will create offset from this point and I'm saying 0 0.075. So here I have the datum and then I will click on here to partition the cell. Click done. Point and normal, I will say point is this one. Normal is this line. And this will create a partition over here. But before I partition this edge, I would like to apply loading over here. So I'll double click on load. I will say pressure, pressure, and click on this point and say 5e raise 7. I've converted the units to SI units. The load has been applied. Now I will partition this edge as well for mashing it properly. So click on partition and click on these cells. Click done three points i will choose this point and this point and third point is this one it has been partitioned now you can see in mesh that it looks green so next step was mesh in any way seventh is mesh module where we define mesh size and element type first i will assign mesh controls so here i want structured hexagonal mesh next i will assign element types the element types used in this example are quadratic elements. So I will use C3D20R. Click done. And then I will seed the part. So I will seed it with 0 0.007. Click done. And then I will simply mesh the part. Click on mesh. Once the meshing has been done, then next is to define the job. I will double click on job. I will say lug continue 
And at this point, I will set up the working directory. Working directory helps us to save all files within one directory. And that way you will know that where all files have been saved. Eight is job module, which we use to run and monitor analysis. I will submit it and I will monitor it. You can see it started with point 0.1 and then point 0.2, point 0.3 because I gave the maximum limit as point 0.1. So that's why it is applied and in increments. It's completed. So let's view results now. Final part is visualization. Ninth is visualization module used for viewing results. And if you like, you can watch its movie. If you like, you can slow down its speed. This is one misses stress. You can have a look at the displacement as well and displacement in various directions. And you can have a look at these forces as well. Forces in X, Y and Z direction. Total forces. Common plot options here. If you want, you can remove the edges. And now there are no edges over here. And you can click on hidden, you can click on wireframe as well. So you can pretty much use all these options for visualization and you can plot these results as well. You can see the reaction, displacements. The lecture slides used in this tutorial are given on this web link and you can watch full playlist at this web link. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond. Until next time, stay curious.